Hi, this is the 360 Pan Suite version 3 Pro Tools HD workflow. I'm using Pro Tools 12.8.2, which has the Ambisonics tracks. Here's my Pro Tools. So I have three dialog tracks, Arjenjere and Max, some Ambisonics Foley footsteps, a piano track there, and here's my monitor track. And as you can see, my monitor is inserted on a third order ambisonics track and it outputs to stereo headphones. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create an auxiliary track, a third order ambisonics auxiliary input for my verb and I'll call it my verb. I'll move it over there. And as you can see, it does not have input yet. It actually doesn't need any. I'll insert a 360 reverb on it. This is my verb. There's concert halls in it, there's churches in it, plenty of domestic spaces, outdoor stuff. All I ask for this convolution reverb are recorded using an ambisonics microphone, which means the impulse responses are truly 3D and turning your head will sound completely natural. I'll select the empty shop, which kind of suits my production here. Time to insert my first panner. I'll insert a 360 pan panner on here and I'll switch it into the reverb. And as you can see, it finds the reverb that I just inserted right away. So I have a private line to the reverb. I'll copy over that panner to the other two dialog tracks and I'll insert a stereo to third order ambisonics panner on the piano track because that's the stereo track switch that into the reverb as well. I'll open up an automation lane, the left-right movement on my dialog track, just to keep an eye on the automation that I'll be writing. And then I'll make a group, an edit group, out of the three moving tracks. That's to ensure that the cursor will move in all three tracks when I nudge forward. This particular workflow requires three more settings, these three here. This way I can use the keypad to nudge forward and back by a full second, which is what my grid and nudge settings are, which makes it easy to move the puck in the video window, which you see here. First thing I see is that the grid is a bit too large, so I narrow it down a bit. Then I'll move the piano pucks over, those, those are stereo, so we have two of them, to the piano, and they're not moving, so I'll make them invisible. In fact, I don't want to see the grid either, and um, the bar I'll hide as well. Max goes over here, and I'll change the puck color to purple. Right-clicking changes the color, so a right-click on Arjun here. This is our starting point. Now I'll just nudge forward until I appear on the right hand side. Here I am. I'll move the puck onto me and then I'll glide to all enabled. Option, shift, forward slash. As you can see, I've just written an automation point right there. I'll nudge and move the puck onto me and then I'll glide to All Enabled again. Now around the rear, I'll just nudge a few frames and make a nice and tight transition that you see right there. Then I can nudge full seconds again. Now at this point, Yera starts appearing. and I just keep everybody's puck in the right place. It's very important to do that because the viewer can turn to face an audio source at any moment and it should appear exactly in the middle. That's why it's so important to keep these pucks very tight to their objects. Yeah, it disappears here. Max appears
go a little bit further until also Jere disappears into that doorway behind the stairs. So now I'll back up and I'll put my three moving dialogues into touch ledge mode to record the distance of each track. For that I will switch my verb out of mute and tone down the reverb time a little bit because this empty shop is a bit longer than what you're seeing here. And um, I start quite far away Kun jij even helpen de speaker van het dak te halen? Yes, ik kom eraan. Back up a bit. Do the same for Jere. Quite far away. Yes, ik kom eraan. Hier boven toch? Nee, hier ligt hij niet. Okay, that's where Max is appearing. Volgens mij was. He walks by really closely. Daarachter, bij die groene deur ergens, geloof ik. Ja, hier is hij. Kom je helpen? Bij die groene deur ergens, geloof ik. Ja, hier is hij. Kom je helpen? Yo. Oops, that's the wrong way around. I should make myself. De deur ergens. Further geloof away. Ja, hier is hij. Kom je helpen? Yo. Now let's listen to this Foley track. For this, I'll create a subbus of the monitor in first order ambisonics to send this footstep recording to. And I'll create an input to my reverb called verb in and create a first order subbus for that one as well. Now what I can do is send these footsteps right to my monitor and create a new send for the reverb and an input to the reverb. Now I can reverberate an entire ambisonics track. Here above, toch? No, here is it not. Finally, I would like to toy with the reverb width a little bit. The reverb doesn't necessarily need to be omnipresent at every point. So when Jere moves around this corner here, I would like it to narrow down a little bit, so that it, the reverb itself seems to originate from that position. Same here with me. And I can use the monitor to simulate looking around and listening to that locality of the reverb. Hier boven toch? Nee, hier ligt hij niet. Hm. Volgens mij was hij ergens daarachter, bij die groene deur ergens. Geloof ik. 
Okay, that's fine. At this point I can make three bounces. A third order ambisonics, a second order ambisonics and a first order ambisonics bounce. The second order ambisonics I'll be using for Facebook and the first one I'll be using for YouTube. The third order ambisonics is for instance for archival purposes. For the second order ambisonics I will need to create a second order ambisonic subbus to my monitor channel. That I can select as an input for my bounce. And that's it, a first, second and third order ambisonics mix of my project. We will show on our website what to do with these three mixes in order to upload to YouTube or Facebook. Just go to audioease.com 360pan.